Hello! So I've tried to make myself a uh, April TBR and I will try my very best to stick to it. I love making TBRs, I love the idea of a TBR, but I am not that good at sticking to it because I am such a big mood reader. But I have some books that have been in my TBR cart for a while and they are books that I really want to pick up so I thought I need to make an April TBR and just stick to it and just read these books because I've been wanting to read them for a while now. So I will try my very best and I have some extra motivation this month because I am actually attending a reading bingo. This reading bingo was made by Reading Wizard on Instagram. She is a fellow Norwegian that I follow on Instagram and she takes amazing bookish photos. And she makes these annual reading bingos that are so much fun, so I thought I would join her spring bingo. So I have been looking through the bingo board and I think I have decided on one row that I really want to accomplish. There are different ways you can play this bingo and I choose to this time not combine that many challenges and with that I mean like the challenge 40 pages in one sitting I will be combining that with another book but I will not combine like a book that will give you chills with a book with yellow on the cover. So if you understand what I mean, um, I will try to pick like different books. So I think I've chosen this row because I just thought the challenges were really interesting and I think I can be able to like accomplish one row. And then of course if I have the time to read more books, uh, I will try to like accomplish more on this board because there are a lot of great challenges but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to be a bit realistic because I am not a fast reader and I mean I've only read five books so far this year because I'm trying not to like have a lot of like pressure on a big reading challenge or anything so I've actually not set myself a goal of how many books I will read this year. So I'm not like reading a lot but I can read around like four or five books a month if I really want to so yeah that's what I'm kind of aiming for here and this month I have chosen a lot of like creepy scary thrillers or like horror crime novels and that's because in Norway it's really common to read a lot of crime through Easter <laughs> and that just made me think about is this a thing in other countries or is it just like a weird Norwegian tradition because Norwegians read a lot of crime novels and we watch a lot of like crime TV shows and just like scary shit and I have no clue where that tradition comes from that's so weird but I love it because I love scary books so I'm totally doing that as well but please let me know in the comments like where you're from and if that is a thing in your country I need to google this afterwards Okay, so let's start with the first challenge, debut author. I am actually cheating a bit on this challenge because I am choosing this book by Christina Getz and she has uh, written a book before but it's more like a biography and it's like non-fiction. So this is, I think it's her second book but it is her first fiction. So kind of cheating but I don't really care because <laughs> I really want to read this book and that was the challenge I could combine it with. So Christina Getz is a Norwegian writer and this book is called Poppy. I don't think this is translated into English but maybe it will so I will still talk about it here. In this book we follow the character Lotte Vik and she has a lot of followers on Instagram and she mainly posts about her cute adorable daughter. Her daughter is only two years old but she just posts a lot of pictures and videos of her and that is kind of like her brand and what she posts about. And then one day she posts a picture of Poppy with her grandparents outside of their house because they are babysitting her. And four hours after this picture was posted, Poppy actually disappears. And they are really popular on social media, so this, uh, I mean, people are really engaged and really wants to know what has happened. And then we start following the cops called Emmer and Mons as they are trying to solve this mystery and it's like, what is this really about? Is it about money or is it about 
like learning someone a lesson about exposing your children in social media which is so interesting by the way or is this connected to Lotte's unknown past? Hmm. Then we have the challenge a book with yellow on the cover. For this challenge I am reading a book that I have bought on my Kindle. I love reading ebooks as well as physical books and the book I have chosen is The House on Abigail Lane written by one of my favorite horror authors called Keelan Patrick Burke. I have now read three books of his. I have read Sour Candy, Blanky, the tent and actually four because i read also read uh, the turtle boy and i've loved all of them so that's why i call him my favorite author i've only read four books by him but i love them all so i'm so excited to read this one as well and it sounds super creepy so the house on abigail lane looks like a typical american home so it was constructed in 1956 and since this year so many weird things has happened to this house or around this house and people have started like vanishing as soon as they go upstairs and it says the only clues are the things that people have left behind for example uh, a wedding ring, a phone and an eye and so through 60 years a lot of weird things has happened for example the neighbors of this house find themselves like waking up in the middle of the lawn and they're just like how did I get here and there's a grieving man that just suddenly like disappears in front of the cops and there are people speaking in reverse and there is music from this house and lights and sounds and oh my god <laughs> and so I think in this book there are like different uh, reports and investigation like reports and um, yeah, it's just like an attempt to understand and like solve this mystery with this house So I have high expectations to this book because I've loved all of his other books And a lot of his books are short stories So I think this one is as well because I think it's only like 60 pages or something So I feel like I'm gonna fly through this I am just so eager to pick it up then for the next challenge we have a book that will give you chills and for this challenge i actually chose a dystopian i chose the handmaid's tale by margaret atwood the handmaid's tale is one of my favorite favorite like all-time favorite tv series i just loved it when i realized that this is based on a book i of course need to read the book as well this is a dystopian it takes place in the u.s but now there is this area in the u.s that they call the republic of gilead and we follow the character offred she is a handmaid in gilead and being a handmaid means that you have to live with the commander and his wife and the commander is what you call the husband in the family because the men have all the power now and women are just treated like shit to be honest and in an age of declining births uh, the handmaids has to basically just sleep with the commander once a month and trying to like get pregnant and that is basically their role in this family they just have to sleep with the commander once a month and even though that's horrible you kind of have to wish to get pregnant because if not you are in like no use for them and so Alfred is living with this family but she of course remembers her past life she had a kid she had a husband and of course she's just like she wants to meet them again and the world is just turned upside down and it's so crazy and intense the women are basically just a tool for this family and the only thing you can do is like go to the market once a day and even at the market uh, everything is like you don't have text in the store you only have pictures because women are not allowed to read oh my god then we have the challenge a book over 500 pages i'm not a fast reader so i'm scared that i will use the whole month just reading this book <laughs> but i will try to read them all <laughs> so for this challenge i chose this book I have the Norwegian version but in English it is called Long Bright River and it's written by Liz Moore. So the story is set in Philadelphia and it's in a neighborhood that is rocked by the opioid crisis. And it's a story about two sisters. Casey lives on the streets and she is struggling with her addiction to drugs while Mickey is actually a cop and she is like walking through the same streets but as a cop. 
And the two sisters don't talk to each other anymore. But Mickey is of course still worrying about how Casey is doing. And then suddenly Casey disappears. And this is at the same time that mysterious murders are happening in like Mickey's streets. And that leads to Mickey becoming just obsessed with finding this murderer and of course finding her sister. And my impression is that we go back and forth in time through this book. So we get to like know Casey and Mickey and their childhood and then we go back to like how they are doing today and what is happening and uh, Mickey trying to solve this uh, murder case. I think it sounds super interesting because it sounds really suspenseful and I'm really excited for this like a mysterious murder case but at the same time it seems to be a lot about um, family bonds and like relationships and addiction and yeah I'm really excited to pick this up and it really fits the challenge really well because it is 522 pages long so right about 500 pages and the last challenge is to read 40 pages in one sitting and for that challenge I will just combine it with one of these books. Then I have a fifth book and I don't know what challenge this will be on the spring bingo. Uh, I'm not sure. This is just like a book that I added on to my TBR because I am in a book club and uh, the pick for April is a book called Perfume the Story of a Murderer. This is a book written by Patrick Suskind and I have no clue what this is about. <laughs> This is what is so much fun with a book club. Uh, you suddenly just read something that you would normally never pick up. I had never heard of this book. And after reading about it on Goodreads, I don't really understand what it's about. It just sounds super weird. And I'm trying to adjust my expectations because the theme for this month was crime novels but after reading about it on goodreads i see a lot of people that are disappointed because they went into the book tr like expecting it was a crime novel but then it turned out to be a bit different than they thought so i'm trying myself to like adjust uh, my expectations but this was the book that was voted to become the book of april for my book club so it seems that the story is set in the 18th century in France. We follow this guy called Jean-Baptiste Grenouille. <laughs> and he is born with a gift and that is an absolute sense of smell. And as a boy he lives to decipher the odors of Paris and he starts making perfumes. And then he becomes obsessed with capturing the smells of different objects. And then one day he catches a scent that drives him out to this quest where he is trying to capture the ultimate perfume which is the scent of a beautiful young virgin. <laughs> and he says it is a tale of murder and it just sounds weird. I don't understand like what is this book? I don't understand. I am interested but at the same time I'm just afraid that this is not my kind of book and that is really confusing but of course I will give it a chance. I uh, will try to read it because it's for my book club so I kind of have to <laughs> and um, I'm trying to go into it without any like particular expectations. I will just like go with the flow and I hope it's good. I think it has good ratings. Let me see. Yeah, it actually has like an average of four stars. So that's pretty good. So we'll see. Look at this amazing stack of books. I just think it's a great stack of books and I cannot wait to read them. And I love that I only picked like thrillers or dystopian or like just like creepy books. I just love it. So that was my April TBR and my spring bingo TBR. I am just so excited for April to start. And please let me know what you are planning to read this month. Are you attending a bingo or a readathon or something like that? Or, or what are you planning to pick up this month? I would love to know down in the comments and I'll talk to you guys later. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.